Hello everyone, this is Stefan from Lush and Salty Aquariums. It's evening time at the reef, and I thought I'd start with a wide shot so you can see this lovely uh, custom cabinet that I had built for the 125 gallon saltwater aquarium, which I've now had for a number of years in two different locations. And uh, this is it at nighttime. I put in some nori, AKA seaweed, the same stuff they wrap sushi with to feed the fish. Um, primarily a source of vitamin C for any fish that eats it, but tangs in particular uh, almost require this food source. You could get it to them in other ways with other foods but basically this is the easiest and um, I don't know, most satisfying way for both me and the fish. You can see them all grouped around it, picking away. Sometimes they get really ravenous around the seaweed, but it's a little bit later and so they're somewhat more tranquil in their behavior. But trust me, in the morning it will be gone um, I use a really simple seaweed clip from Two Little Fishies. You can get them at any decent fish store or online. And then I buy the seaweed the same way, although I know they sell it in grocery stores as well. Um, this clip can be used for any number of other uh, vegetable food sources. You could put lettuce things like that uh, if you're feeding a freshwater tank, a shrimp tank. But here it's for my saltwater fish. So that big sailfin tang has been dining on it forever and it's massive, maybe a half pound. And I got that thing at Petco for $25. It was the size of a silver dollar. And now, I don't know, it's um, like I said, a half pound, it would fit in a frying pan technically too big for this tank. Even at 125 gallons of fish of that size, you would never buy it like that to put in a tank like this, but it grew up here. And so I'm good with it, it's good with it. And good luck trying to catch it. If I wanted to take it out, I'd actually have to use a um, hook and line, really, frankly, because the net would be a total clown show they try to be ripping around in there to catch a fish like that but it's happy and it'll end its life in here it'll stay here forever it's a signature fish um, I don't know what one that size would cost uh, like I said pretty common in the trade and relatively inexpensive but at a much smaller size you see the magnificent fox face it's not a tang but it appreciates it's vitamin C and seaweed, same as the tangs. Here is Hawaii's iconic yellow tang. Um, it's sort of known for being the Hawaiian fish of state, but it is not technically. There's another fish, I believe a kind of um, wrasse that, or trigger fish that is the uh, state fish of Hawaii, but everybody knows the yellow tang is iconic to that state in those waters. Here you see a coal tang, another relatively common fish in the trade. Um, beautiful yellow eye against a purple lush skin tone with just the slightest bit of yellow around the edge of its fins. So those four fish are the big ones. Uh, you see here is a um, fairy wrasse, a purple-headed fairy wrasse. And then I've got a file fish, which is fantastic, interesting oddball, but it serves a tremendous purpose in the saltwater aquarium. It will, if you're lucky, not all of them do, but it typically will feed on aptasia which is like a dandelion and, and a weed in terms of uh, how it can take over a fish tank. It's an anemone. 
that will predate on sleeping or sick fish. It will uh, multiply and multiply. It's ugly in um, large amounts and it becomes large amounts if you do not tend to it. I do not have any, I shouldn't say that everybody has, if you have a tank long enough, you will have Aptasia, but it's kept in check by that wonderful critter. So well worth the 30 bucks or whatever it costs, give or take. So he's in there. Um, I've got primarily leather corals, like these big uh, different varieties. This is a toxic green le uh, cabbage leather right here. That the fabulous color, I don't know if it's coming through the way it does to my eye, but it is a lime green. These are purple and pink. Again, I have the nighttime lights operating, so it's skewing heavy into the blue purple color uh, scheme, the colors of night, but they have a more um, eye-popping pink when the lights are at their brighter tone. These are Gorgonians. Um, easy to grow in a tank that has some particulates for it to feed on in the water column. If you're trying to run a pristine reef tank where the water is crystal clear and you're growing um, the kinds of corals that require pristine conditions, these won't do as well. But my tank has a heavy bio load, I feed a lot, um, and I'm just not that kind of aquarist. I'm not a perfectionist. I believe in a little bit of uh, letting nature tell me what to do as opposed to me trying to tell nature what to do. And in this tank, that means uh, a lot of uh, food, a lot of fish, a lot of things, particles in the water column for things like the Gorgonians. There's one there, there's one there, there's one there. I've got a group of them back here. I've actually fragged those. In other words, I've cut the stems and re reattached them to plugs to create basically a colony. You see a frag behind them of one of my long tentacle leathers. If you can make it out, I have a toothpick right through the center, which is what I used to adhere that to its plug. Otherwise it would have floated away. Crazy glue and a soft leather are not ideal. So that's one of the tricks using um, a wooden toothpick, which is not toxic to the water. Eventually I can just pull the toothpick out and the coral will be attached. This is a knobby, as I think it's called a knobby uh, gorgonian, and it's it could use a fragging. You see it just literally dangling against the glass, um, but it's happy. Its tentacles or polyps are all out. All of the gorgonians and leathers are showing full polyp extension, even though the lights are dimming, um, probably because it's a desirable feeding time for them whereas some of the leathers are tightening up like this one, it's closing up for the evening, or this fabulous Sinulara. It also is a toxic green and it is uh, folded up for the evening. They will unfurl and become twice that size and display their polyps uh, almost all the time, except for in darkness. I've got some interesting corals in the back on that ledge I created, it's being held up by a magnet. You can buy those um, fabricated uh, ledge mock pieces of coral and um, they're really pretty cool. And I put some Paleothoa grandis, those green sort of Venus flytrap corals. And then you see a mushroom next to it. These blue pieces are um, remnants of a uh, fabulous blue sponge that I have in the tank. And I had cut it up 
and some of the pieces just drifted around and anchored over there. This is the original. It's much smaller, but it's still doing all right. It just hasn't grown in that location, but other parts of it have found their way over here. So wonderful um, surprises like that are just, just one of many, many cool things about keeping a saltwater aquarium. Anyway, I could go on and on, but I've reached the 10 minute mark, which is long for me at Lush and Salty. If you have any questions or comments, I'd love to hear from you. And as always, keep your hands in the tank. Ciao for now.